polygamy, polygyny, polyandry, polyamory, bigamy, legality. Ciao, my little legal dumplings. Today we discuss the polysyllabic polynomials all about relationships, specifically multiple people in one marriage. Let's get into it. Before we can dissect why polygamy is illegal in Canada, one has to understand the importance of words in law. If the language of the law was not crucial to how cases are tried, then every jury would have access to a dictionary. Pop culture has named the wordy and verbose legal language legalese, and at times it really is like reading another language. Words like thereof, aforementioned, here and after, heretofore, wherein, and whatsoever are all common in legal documents such as the criminal code. It is important to understand the language used because each word serves a specific purpose and picking one synonym over another could mean a judge sets a new precedent or a law is deemed unconstitutional. This is where polygamy comes in because until the 1950s, polygamy laws in Canada were expressly anti-Mormon in their use of language. Eek! I'm getting ahead of myself. What even is polygamy? Polygamy is the term used to describe and classify people who are married to multiple people at once. But where did this word come from? At first guess, one would assume the prefix, prefix meaning something added to a word or root to change its meaning. Prefix poly means many. This leaves only the gammy bit to be defined. My lovely little Oxford Dictionary of English Etymology explains that the word polygamy comes from the Greek polygamous, meaning often marrying. Break it down a bit more, and you guessed it. You have the prefix polis, meaning many, and gamos, meaning marriage. Polygamy is actually just an umbrella term for multiple marriages, with two branches or categories therein. Polygyny, uh, from the aforementioned prefix, and the Greek gune, meaning woman, is when a man has multiple wives. And polyandry, um, many, and air, or males, is when a woman has multiple husbands. Of the poly marriages, polyandry is the most uncommon one. It's important to clarify one important fact about the legality of relationships and the aforementioned terms. Polyamory is completely legal. Polyamory is the term for multiple people in one relationship. Now we're switching up the etymological roots of this word because while poly comes from Greek origins, amory comes from the Latin amor meaning love. Isn't it so cool that the meaning makes so much sense once you know the origins and roots of the word? I love it. Alright, in layman's terms, terms, polyamory is lots of relationships, polygamy is lots of marriages, polygyny, lots of wives, polyandry, lots of husbands. But what about bigamy? Bigamy is when polygamy is illegal. So having lots of marriages may be called polygamy, but it's considered bigamy in Canada. Bigamy is the Greek root gamus. We know that one. With uh, the lovely prefix by added on to mean twice married. Now on that note, let's discuss the laws around bigamy. I have with me my trusty pocket criminal code from 1999, and because it's now 2022, I will also reference the Government Canada website for the updated criminal code. Offenses against conjugal rights. Bigamy, section 291. Everyone commits bigamy who, A, in Canada, one, being married, goes through a form of marriage with another person, two, knowing that another person is married, goes through a form of marriage with that person, or three, on the same day or simultaneously, goes through a form of marriage with more than one person, or B, being a Canadian citizen, resident in Canada, leaves Canada with intent to do anything mentioned in subparagraphs A, 1 to 3, and pursuant thereto, does outside Canada anything mentioned in those subparagraphs, in circumstances mentioned therein. You are not committing bigamy if you didn't know you were married or had lost contact for more than seven years with your spouse, or presume that the marriage was annulled. Now, the following section, section 291, was changed on 19th of September 2019, and it now reads, Punishment, section 291. 1. Every person who commits bigamy is killed guilty of a. An indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for a term of not more than five years, or b. An offense punishable on summary conviction. 
certificate of marriage. Two, for this purpose, for the purpose of this section, a certificate of marriage issued under the authority of the law is evidence of the marriage and for, or form of marriage to which it relates without proof of the signature or official character of the person by whom it purports to be signed. Now, as I mentioned before, bigamy is when polygamy is illegal. So you could imagine my surprise when I continued on to section 293 of the conjugal offenses chapter to find that polygamy was its own special section, also amended in September 2019. Polygamy, section 293. 1. Every person is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment of a term not more than five years or is guilty of an offense punishable on a summary conviction who a. practices or enters into or in any manner agrees or consents to practice or enter into any form of polygamy or in or any kind of conjugal union with more than one person at the same time, whether or not it is by law recognized or as a binding form of marriage, or B, celebrates, assists, or is a party to a right ceremony contract or consent that purports to sanction a relationship mentioned in paragraph A. <sighs> Evidence in the case of polygamy. 2. Where an accused is charged with an offense under the section no. Uh, a veerman or a proof of the method by which the alleged relationship was entered into, agreed to, in, agreed to or consented to, is necessary to the indictment or on the trial of the accused, nor is it necessary on the trial to prove that the persons were alleged to have entered into the relationship had or intended to have sexual intercourse. The reason why bigamy and polygamy are two different crimes is because, according to a Department of Justice research report, titled Polygyny and Canada's Obligation Under International Human Rights Laws, bigamy was a little too niche because it criminalized the practice of multiple marriage contracts. So they introduced Section 293 so people couldn't find loopholes by having conjugal relations that are not a legally binding form of marriage, such as multiple common law relationships. We interrupt the regular programming for an urgent new word alert. Conjugal means a marriage or relationship between married people, and it comes from the Latin conjug, meaning spouse. Back to the regular programming. So to sum it up, these sections of the criminal code are saying that if you marry, agree to marry, or have a conjugal relationship, such as a common law relationship, with another person, if you are already married to someone else, you can be sentenced to five years in prison or a summary conviction, such as a large fine and minimal jail time. You are not allowed to leave the country to get another marriage. Nice try. So now that we know about the language used and the law as written in the criminal code, let's discuss the history of polygamy in Canada and some of the landmark cases. So back in 1890, the president of the Mormon church, Wilford Woldruff, released a statement denouncing polygamy and plural marriages in the church in an effort to appease the U.S. government. Now, Mormons were fleeing persecution in the U.S. because of this, and they were coming to settle in Canada, leading the Canadian government to criminalize polygamy too. Now, I mentioned before that there was... the the Canadian legislation at the time was was anti-Mormon. Uh, they used the term plural marriages, which was a, a Mormon term for polygamy. I mentioned before that Canadian legislation used anti-Mormon language. They used the Mormon term plural marriages to specifically criminalize Mormon and funda fundamentalist Latter-day Saints from practicing polygamy. Now, if you're asking how this law could be passed, updated, carry a five-year prison sentence, and still be firmly against the law today, then you're asking the same questions as the lawyers at a 2009 BC Supreme Court case. Over in the fundamentalist Latter-day Saints community of Bountiful BC, two fellows named Winston Blackmore and James Oller tried to fight their bigamy convictions before BC Supreme Court Judge Sherry Ann Donegan stating that the law against polygamy was unconstitutional because it infringed their freedom of religion under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Justin Donegan sat back with the classic, Do not cite the deep magic to me, which I was there when it was written, saying that these men 
clearly believed they were above the law when they were entering into multiple marriages. Alrighty. The Bountiful Polygamist cited Section 2 of the Charter that states that every Canadian citizen has the fundamental freedom of conscience and religion. They also cited Section 15, <clears throat> which reads, Equality before and under the law, and equal protection and benefit of law. Every individual is equal before and under the law and has the right to the equal protection and equal benefit of the law without discrimination and, in particular, without discrimination based on race, national or ethnic origin, color, religion, sex, age, or mental or physical disability. AKA, the polygamy and bigamy laws are discriminatory and unconstitutional. Thus, they argued they could not be charged at all. Now, due to a series of unfortunate events on the part of the previous BC Attorney General, Wally Opal, who was actively looking for his third special biased prosecutor after he'd burned his way through two already, the case was thrown out and they were never charged. Fast forward to 2011, where a court has just heard several months worth of testimonies and arguments from experts, academics, past and present polygamists, and activist groups to decide on the constitutionality of Section 290 and 293. B.C. Supreme Court Chief Justice Robert Bauman upheld this decision, releasing a 335-page decision outlining exactly why this charter argument doesn't hold up in his court. There is one thing that outweighs religious freedoms, according to Just Justice Bauman, and that is harm. Specifically, the harm that can come to women and children in a polygynous relationship. The danger to women and children outweighs the freedom of religion infringement and is reasonable to protect the physical, psychological, and sexual harm that could come to this group. While the ruling may have focused on the fundamental fundamentalist church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Bountiful BC, it will have implications for polygamous Muslims in Canada. Polygamy, specifically polygyny, is most common in Asian, Middle Eastern, and African countries. While not always technically legal, it's often practiced and has a tendency to immigrate with the people. The criminal code is clear about Canadian citizens leaving the country to enter into polygamous relationships. Therefore, it's conceivable that it will also criminalize recent Canadian citizens that immigrated here with multiple marriages. According to CBC, before the failed 2009 prosecution of the two men from Bountiful, BC, quote, the most recent charges were in 1937. The last convictions were more than 100 years ago, unquote. So then we must be in agreement that the protection of women and children from harm outweighs the constitutional right to freedom of religion, right? Wrong. There are many, including lawyers and some judges, that say that not only are the laws unconstitutional, they're also archaic and based solely on Christian values. Tom Dixon, a dissenting lawyer from the 2011 case, said, and I quote, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms offers two protections regarding religion. Laws cannot have a strictly religious purpose, and they can't actively discriminate against people of faith because of their religious practices. Unquote. So what do you think? Are these laws discriminatory? Should the Charter of Rights and Freedoms protect all of your rights all of the time? I think it takes a 335-page ruling, some introspection, and a good hard look at context and laws through the critical legal theory. Share your thoughts. Are you hashtag legalized polygamy or hashtag monogamous conjugal relations forever? Woo-wee! What a ride! You made it through and now know a little bit more about polygamy, words that start with poly, and how our charter rights can be outweighed by a perceived danger. Ask not what the Charter can do for you, but what you could do that is not protected by the Charter. We're told the wise, keep your dictionary handy for all those legalese terms that could throw you for a loop. Ciao, my little legal dumplings. Thank you for listening.